So I know that was like the big mama of lectures. All your antidepressants. So let's go over the top patient education that's going to be on your quiz. Because honestly, we can know everything about everything or try to know everything about everything. But you guys can't remember everything, really. It's like you're in a cash um, box and you're trying to get all the cash, but you can only hold so much. So let's go over the top of the top. What we need to know for your quiz, and I can probably pretty much whittle down what you need to know. Because honestly, every school is designed to do one thing, and that's help you pass your NCLEX. If they're not doing that, they're not gonna get accredited. If they don't get accredited, there's no more school. So we've taken this apart from all the NCLEX books, and even a psychiatric teacher uh, that teaches in Iowa, and this is what we got for our pharmacology psych quiz for your patient education on antidepressants. Dun, da, da, da. So the biggest overview is we are telling your patients to take their meds daily. If they are not taking their meds on a daily basis or on a regular basis, we're dropping below what's called therapeutic range. Now, usually, it takes two to three weeks to reach this therapeutic range. So patient education, you're going to get a question that says, your patient says that their medication isn't working. What do you educate them with? Well, we have to educate the patients that it takes sometimes a little while for these things to reach therapeutic range, you know, right in that range. It might take two to three months to reach maximum effects. Now you're thinking, Okay, what's the therapeutic range and what's maximum effects? Well, you can still be in therapeutic range, but are you on the low end or are you on the high end and getting maximum effects? Not being toxic, but getting the most you can out of these medications. Now, another thing for your patient education that you're going to want to write down is do not suddenly stop the medication. Step down off it. Wean off the medication. A sudden stop can result in relapse. You have to educate your clients about that. Because honestly, your patients are not going to probably take them every single day. They might throw them away. So knowing that they're going to get a relapse if they don't take their medication, then that's going to probably um, help them. Another huge thing that's probably going to be on your test, if your school is helping you pass the NCLEX, or preparing you for the NCLEX, this will be on your test, guaranteed. Um, suicide risk. This is increased in the first month of therapy. So your patient has just been diagnosed with a depressant disorder. Now we have to educate them that increased suicide risk in the first month of therapy because your patients are coming out of their depression. Remember, put that in your mind. Having them being depressed, they're too pretty much, they're non-motivated to do anything about their suicide ideations. Now they're feeling better. Now they're getting energy, but they still have that depression. And now they might carry out and have enough energy to carry out their suicide. So first month, guys, we are have higher suicide risk higher suicide risk. That's what you have to really, really hone in on, take away. Now, specifically for your TCAs, your tricyclic antidepressants, we have cardiac rhythms. We have to watch out for dysrhythmias due to toxicity. And we are taking at bedtime because it causes sedation. So write those down on a note card, maybe write it on your notes. But these are the big ones that may show up on the test for specific antidepressants. And this is all really for patient education. And it can even be rolled into nursing interventions too. So your, your class, your class, your test might say, out of which of these antidepressants could cause cardiac dysrhythmias? Or, which one should you take at bedtime? Well, honestly, 
taking at bedtime anyone that causes sedation, as well as orthostatic hypotension, because this can decrease the blood pressure and you have risks for falling, okay? So that is for your TCAs. Your SSRIs, on the other hand, well, not exactly the opposite, but just the opposite. We're taking in the morning, not taking at night, because this causes your patient to wake up. Because remember, our serotonin, we're not causing sleepiness. We're blocking, really, the sleepiness. So we have to take it in the morning. We're avoiding coffee, no coffee. Taking with food to avoid that GI upset. Because serotonin, 80% of it is located in the gut. Remember that. When we're watching sodium levels, as well as labs, especially with old patients, on diuretics, okay? Now, MAOIs was our non-friendly antidepressant. This is really the last line drug if nothing else works. Now, you can't take any MAOIs with anything else. And remember, you have a big risk for high blood pressure crisis. Okay? So we have to educate your patients that tyramine, this is the big one here. So remember, tyramine, any type of cheeses, wine, as well as um, certain meats, like sausage. Okay? Now, I include this in the entire lecture. This is just pretty much an overview, guys. So, not for bipolar patients and no other meds with MAOIs. Very, very mean guy. Doesn't like to play well with others. For atypical antidepressants, atypical, one of the big things here is we're doing seasonal pattern of depression. So with your Welbutrin, Welbutrin is an atypical or Cymbalta. We are starting in the fall months and can wean off in the spring. So this is what's called our seasonal patterns of depression. Usually our atypical antidepressants are used that way. Now we want to educate the patients to take at night. So atypical, like Welbutrin and Cymbalta, antidepressants take at night. TCAs take at night as well. Okay. Now, how do we know if it's working? How do we know if it's not working? What if the patient is getting better? What if the patient's getting worse? How do we know? Well, we have this evaluation here. The questions that you have to ask yourself, pretty much nursing process, the last phase of it, is the patient getting better? Is the patient getting worse? How do you know? Well, you guys can pause this and write these down. Is the medication working? Is it not working? If your patient is exhibiting um, a better mood, or basically, really, if we can just cover all this up, they're taking antidepressants, guys. We're trying to get the patient not depressed. It's an antidepressant, okay? So we're thinking antidepressants. How do we know the patient's getting better? Well, we're getting antidepressants. It's just like um, antihypertensive drugs. Basically, we're lowering the blood pressure. How do we know the patient's getting better? Well, the blood pressure is coming lower. It's the same thing. So we can say this in a whole bunch of different ways here. We're really saying the same thing. They're verbalizing a good mood. Fantastic. That doesn't seem like depressed at all. Performing their ADLs. They're getting dressed. They're getting hygiene. They're feeding themselves. They're brushing their teeth. They are shaving themselves, probably with an electric razor because we don't want any razor blades in the psych ward. They have better sleep. Fantastic, that's great. They have improved eating habits. They're not too fat. There's a fat. And they're not too skinny. They're looking good. They're getting in shape. 
All right. <laughs> and they have <coughs> they have better social interaction or what's known as your therapeutic milieu, yes, of course. So we're just trying to say guys, your patients are becoming less depressed. An antidepressant is supposed to do that, obviously. So, so we're just trying to say guys, your patients are becoming less depressed. An antidepressant is supposed to do that, obviously. So, the last thing we have to watch out for with your almost nearly all the, um, what's it called? Antidepressant medication is anticholinergic properties, okay? So anticholinergic, remember, we're getting really dry patients. So chewing gum, wearing sunglasses, drinking more water, and peeing before taking the medications will help decrease the urine retention. We're causing your patients to be very, very dry. So these are some main, um, what's it called, nursing inter interventions, or basically patient education that we can give your patients who are experiencing anticholinergic or that dry effect. No juices anymore. So we're causing saliva by chewing gum. Wearing sunglasses, and you're like, juices in your eyeball? Why would you wear sunglasses? Well, your eyes have liquid on them, and um, when you have pretty much anticholinergics on board, your eyes dry up and it's hard to see. Or you can become photosensitive from having light. So we have more sunglasses. Drinking water because obviously your body's 60% water. You want to make sure we're not getting too dry. And peeing before you take your medication because your kidneys make 30 mLs of uh, fluid every hour. And if you haven't peed and you take your anticholinergic medic, or basically your uh, antidepressant medication, and it causes anticholinergic, this dry effect, you're going to retain all that. So peeing before the medication is a good thing. All right, guys, that's what you really need to know for your patient education. I know it's a lot of information, but hopefully we've condensed it down and we don't have to get all the books out and try to scramble it in your brain. You really only need the need to know information. It's gonna help you pass your test as well as the NCLEX. So let's go on to the next video. You can get your life back and stop those all night study sessions. Featuring our new pre-lecture videos and follow along study guides that highlight the book for you. You can study anywhere at your own pace with our PC, tablet, and mobile software. Join thousands of successful students already using SimpleNursing.com and get to your goals faster, less stress, and more success. Get started today. Join now at SimpleNursing.com.